Welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 22nd of January, 2021. On the news today, smoking's long decline is over. Big surprise. Amid the COVID-19 lockdowns and the public scaremongering tactics on electronic cigarettes, people, especially those working from home, switch back to deadly combustible cigarettes and smoke more than they did in 2015. Next, I'm going to give you the license plate number of an organization who will capitalize on this opportunity to go after flavors. Yup, it's the American Lung Association. That license plate is like a rash all over the computer. In China, they know that taste matters to vapors, so Feelum develops Taste Institute to improve e-liquid flavors. Where are they getting the money for this, you gotta ask? From the United States stock market. We'll talk about this before, the, we talked about this before in the news. Uh, Relics Technology partnering with Citibank for its US IPO. Well, guess what? Relics is now listed on the New York Stock Exchange and their stock price more than doubled, giving the company a market value of $46 billion to grow the vaping industry. S'more and Fog Core Technology, who's the parent of Relics, aren't the only Chinese manufacturers banking on the future of vaping. Most of us only know a handful of brand names in vaping, but there are currently 35,000 companies in China that deal in the manufacturing of vaping-related products. Well, despite all the bans, the taxes, the regulations, and the bad news lately, the e-cigarette industry is on fire. It grew 270% last year with 18,000 new vaping-related businesses and 10,000 electronic cigarette companies. And this article comes straight from China. In Canada, Snow Plus partners with Divine Laboratories to create vaping solutions. Products will be made in China and then filled in Canada. And in New Zealand, a researcher at the University of Otago, Wellington says, health authorities should change the warning labels on vape products from threatening nicotine addiction warnings to positive messages encouraging smokers to take up vaping. And once again, we have another opinion piece from Inside Sources, titled, Public Health Experts Say, Fight Smoking, Not Nicotine. Why are researchers and public health experts saying fight smoking, not tobacco harm reduction? Because it's backed by science. Our science segment looks at the ethics of tobacco harm reduction. And this week, our advocacy segment will show you the consequences of prohibition. Yep, underage vaping and illegal products being sold on social media. Yep, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social media websites are exploding with underage sales and advertising of already illegal products. When you make it impossible, for legitimate businesses to legally sell their safe, tested, legitimate, and regulated products easily, a thriving black market will always serve the public's desire for those products. My only question is, who's gonna become the next Robin Hood Pablo Escobar of vaping? You know, you go to China with a couple grand, and then you sell it in the States for millions of dollars. It's already starting to happen, you saw it in my news report last week with the custom seizures in Illinois and Texas, bragging about them stopping a few pallets of puff bars or whatever they were. Well, I'm here to tell you that 18, 19, and 20 year old kids are selling to teenagers because they're hip to the latest social media platforms and they thrive on pop-up black market social media sales. Just wait till the mainstream media gets a hold of this shit. All right, enough with the highlights. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Yep, 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, our first story comes from the Wall Street Journal. Smoking's long decline is over. Slide in cigarette sales stopped last year amid the COVID-19 lockdowns and the health concerns from e-cigarettes. The decades-long decline in the U.S. cigarette sales halted last year as people in lockdown lit up more frequently and health concerns around electronic cigarettes caused some vapors to switch back to cigarettes. I'll spare you the details, but it's all summed up in this chart right here. Slower burn. 2014, 2015... Nice, slow, steady decline in cigarette sales. Well, they successfully reversed it. And now for 2020, the cigarette sales volume was more than it was in 2015. How about vaping? Yeah. Here's the vaping sales figures. And this came from Altria. However, I don't think it includes all the vaping sales in the country. I think it's just their sales in the country. Because I know for a fact we got a hell of a lot more than 9.8 million vapors. Anyway, you know somebody's going to capitalize on this opportunity. And we know exactly who the fuck that's going to be. American Lung Association. Yeah. Yeah. Two days ago, they released their state of tobacco control. How much of a nanny state is your state? And you can bet your ass that the news media is going to be plastering this all over every single website out there. Because it's horrible. Smoking has gotten so much worse than it was before they started attacking vaping. Except they're going to leave the part out about where they attacked vaping because they want to get rid of that too. How do we know that? Here's their chart on where the states rank with flavored tobacco products. And because the omnibus bill, all vape gear is now going to be considered tobacco products. So if your vape gear has flavoring in it, then it's a flavored tobacco product, whether you want it to be or not. And naturally, all the states, except for the ones that have already been trying to ban it, get an F from the American Lung Association. Yeah. And you know what else they want? Your tax money. Here's where the states rank on taxes. Yeah. Where's your state rank in there? Is it getting an F? Or in you one of the places where they tax the shit out of it, and it's like 90% tax. Anyway, you can take a look at that if you uh, want to have a little thrill. All right. Over in China, they understand that vapors know that taste matters. Flavor matters. So according to a study that they conducted over there, 3,000 Chinese vapor consumers, taste was the key factor in choosing an electronic cigarette. The top three indexes in flavor were the overall sensation of taste, the aroma, and the amount of vapor that is produced. So... Realizing the flavor matters so much, Fellum decided that they were going to open up a laboratory and institute to study how to make the flavors better in your electronic cigarette. Yep. And, like I said earlier, where do you think that they got this money for this? Let's take a look at Bloomberg.com and take a look at China vaping firm more than doubles in trading debut. Yeah. They're saying that China's biggest electronic cigarette maker reaches $46 billion in value, but I guess they forgot about S'more. Yeah. 
S'more was the first one, except they're on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. This is the biggest one in the United States so far. Oh, and they're selling not in the United States. They're selling in China. So this is the way that Bloomer can justify making so much money. Because I'm sure that, you know, his partners bought some of this stock too. But, you know, we can't can't say that without being certain. However, there are a lot of people that bought this stock. And it was originally advertised for sale at $12 a share. And it did drop to $10 a share. So if you happen to buy it at $10 a share, you just tripled your money. Yeah. Last time it was selling for almost $30 a share. They raised $15 billion with this IPO. And now they're valued at $46 billion. But I'm not gonna get into teaching you how the stock market works. Why are they so intent on doing all this? Going to get the money? Because they're growing leaps and bounds. The e-cigarette industry is on fire. Yeah, we talked about Fogcore Technology, the parent of domestic e-cigarette brand Relics, that brought up this upsurge. That's who they're crediting it to. S'more made its IPO offering and made a crap ton of money for the company to invest and build all these stores because the new regulations are gonna prohibit the Postal Service, FedEx, and UPS is jumping on board already because I've already seen dozens of posts on Reddit, people panicking because everybody was counting on UPS to do the right thing. But it looks like they're gonna take the same stance. Time, only time will tell where we actually stand with UPS. However, we already know that the post office, as of April 30th, is going to start implementing procedures because this is not considered a tobacco item, and tobacco is prohibited. And same with FedEx. FedEx already made the announcement. And people are panicking because the vape shops are like, oh, I better set up an account with UPS so what... Uh, you know, I can have them bring my stuff into my shop. Well, except for the UPS representatives are like, oh, no new account. Sorry, your vape shop. We can't set up a new account for you. So where are we going to end up? DHL? Or is somebody going to start up a new um, transportation hub, distribution hub for the country? Now it's going to be left with the billionaires duking out the billionaires. No, man, that's my business. You ain't going to shake me down. I'll take you down before you take me down. However, in China, they're prospering. They currently have 35,000 companies in the country whose names or business scopes contain electronic cigarettes or electronic atomizers meaning either they make the coils or they make the shell for the coils or they make the parts for it or they assemble them or they sell them. It's not just the brand name that we know because they're going to contract out like any other business. You know, they don't have the specialty equipment to actually pour these things and then manufacture them or have the machine. So they're going to contract out that the job and they're going to get a pallet of parts in and then just like, you know, the automotive industry, they have an assembly line to put everything together. Well, don't let anybody think, tell you otherwise, and don't let anybody fool you. 270% growth is what they had last year. It's a year-on-year -year increase of 270%. Yeah. Yeah. 18,000 enterprises were added. And it's all published in the China Electronic Cigarette Industry Value Insight Report 2020, released by Beijing News Think Tank. 
Yeah, pointed out the uh, emergence of the electronic cigarette park at the electronic cigarette products growing exponentially. What the value of the market share is going to be 10 years down the road, regardless of what the United States wants to do. The rest of the world, this is growing. Even in places where it hasn't been legalized. You know, somebody pointed out the other day in a discussion forum that vaping products have been illegal forever. Regulations are what it takes to make them legalized products because it's then it's recognized and then there's definitions for what is what. So regulations are inevitable. What kind of regulations they put into place, that's what matters the most. However, it's growing. This cigarette, electronic cigarette industry, the vaping industry, it is not going anywhere. Let's jump over to, to Toronto, Canada. Snow Plus, a vape company headquartered in Beijing, China. Actually, Snow Plus has three headquarters depending on who you talk to. And I bet you that's all done for regulation purposes because you know they can regulate things in cities and states and even countries, but there's always ex exceptions in the law. And these exceptions allow for international stuff. So like, even if they ban electronic cigarettes in this country, you think they're gonna tell a manufacturing shop, no, you can't make parts for one. First off, how would they even know that it's a part for one? By the CAD drawing? That's not going to specify what it's for. We need a component that looks like a tube. It's got some threads on the one end, threads on the other end. Maybe this size, this length. How many can you manufacture? We're going to need 50,000 of them. You think some manufacturer in this country is going to go, oh, we can't manufacture that because that's an electronic cigarette. They're going to say, no, we're making a tube with threads on it. And we're going to take the business if they give it to us. Well, Toronto, Canada, one of the e-liquid laboratories, Divine Laboratories over there, is an e-liquid manufacturer based in Lindsay, Ontario. And they made a strategic partnership that combines a closed system vape with locally filled e-liquid solutions. Which also you know, is the exception to some of these things because, you know, you can have an electronic cigarette device, but if it's not usable as an electronic cigarette because it's incomplete, you're still allowed to ship that kind of stuff. You just can't sell something that's complete and ready to go. That's why, like, a lot of the RDAs don't come with coils because they said, oh, well, you... It's not a vape, and it can't be a vape. Until you put cotton in the coil in it, that's just a, you know, ornamental piece of metal and glass. Yeah. So, how about in New Zealand? We have a researcher at the University of Otago, Wellington, who is trying to get people to understand that... If you put these warning labels on products, you know, like, this product contains nicotine, nicotine's addictive chemical, even though it's zero milligram, you're not doing anybody any good. You're, you're, you're basically forcing people to think that it's better for them to smoke than to use a product that doesn't even have nicotine in it. And the people that have an open mind and some common sense are going, that's not right. That is unethical behavior for you to force people to put these warning labels on things that don't even have nicotine in them. Especially when the science proves that vaping is safer than traditional combustible cigarettes. 
If you are a smoker, vaping reduces harms to your health. That's one of the things that he wants to see put onto a bottle of juice like that or onto a product. Not nicotine warning labels that don't do anything. How about if you are a smoker, vaping reduces your risk of lung cancer. I know the American Heart Association isn't going to agree with that because that's going to stop their funding if, you know, everybody stops smoking. Well, what are they going to argue about? The pollution coming out of the tailpipe of your car? Huh? What are they going to argue about then? We're going to make sucking on tailpipes illegal. Yeah. Okay. You can take a look at the article yourself. Jumping... Back to an opinion piece. We're back at Inside Sources. And Michael McGrady, man, this boy can write. As a percentage of American smoking has fallen to below 14%, the tobacco giant Philip Morris has even declared that it's trying to achieve a smoke-free world. It's so good that it's trying to achieve a smoke-free world, even though its primary product is tobacco. Great, and it's been diversifying for years, but. So it's tempting to think the public health debate over smoking tobacco and nicotine is over. We know clearly that it's not. So instead, the battle is largely shifted to a new debate over prohibition, which doesn't work, versus mitigation. Should smoking and vaping, etc., be completely banned? Or should governments treat products that lower risks of bad health outcomes differently than they treat traditional cigarettes? Very well-written article. I commend him once again. Some may think of tobacco control science as an evidence-based, objective, rational, scientific citadel. The present account of tribal clashes on tobacco harm reduction issues, biased by feelings of trust and mistrust, and arising out of values, moral emotions, and attitude roots, seems pertinent to me. That attempts at rational thought are subject to many biasing influences, has been recognized for decades. Perhaps being reminded on the multiple non-scientific foundations of viewpoints will cause some reassessments of positions or even the confidence one has in positions. Additional respected experts may not be persuaded to weigh in on tobacco harm reduction, but research does argue that such could contribute to progress if otherwise trusted researchers come into the debate. In other words, if you've been on the fence about it, then you get off the fence and do what you know is right. And stop with the fear mongering and the, and the, the moral debilitating arguments. The science is out there and as time goes on, the junk science is going to be washed out by the science that continues to be re reproduced and replicated because the outcomes are going to be consistent. That's the whole foundation of science. Drop your biases. If you have any, you're supposed to report them and do science that can be reproduced all across the globe because there's no difference in how this funk this product operates here or in china or australia or india or south africa or europe or england or canada doesn't matter where you are this product will do the exact same thing everywhere granted scientifically you can say that you know higher elevations that's going to change the results slightly but those can be factored in it's simple math. Now it's time to recognize the science and do the right thing.
And now we are left with a study that's published in Nicotine and Tobacco Research from the Oxford Academy. The Ethics of Tobacco Harm Reduction. This is an analysis of the e-cigarette availability from the perspective of utilitarianism, bioethics, and public health ethics. Because it's already been proven, communities of color, impoverished communities, those are disproportionately affected by tobacco addiction. So, if you were a government official and your job was to make sound policy, your job is to take a look at the ethics of the situation and address that as a factor in your regulatory framework. We're going to jump straight to the conclusion of this because I know most people are not interested in detailed scientific papers, let alone some people not being able to read the content, let alone understand what it says. However, the conclusion of this study is that the recent and rapid expansion of electronic cigarettes in the tobacco marketplace has endangered significant controversies in the public health community and beyond and worries about vulnerable populations, especially youth, and concerns that the long-term health risks of electronic cigarettes are not entirely known. However, while uncertainties remain about the risks of electronic cigarettes, there is conclusive evidence regarding the considerable and certain harms from smoking combustible cigarettes. Therefore, it is critical to examine the ethical warrant for electronic cigarettes. If electronic cigarettes are significantly less harmful than combustible cigarettes, as suggested by the current evidence, regardless of whether you say there's enough of it or not, public health officials are justified in pursuing electronic cigarettes as tobacco harm reduction strategy. The public health ethics framework and principles of biomedical ethics complement each other in supporting electronic cigarettes to help achieve tobacco harm reduction and support public health officials and clinical professionals working in concert to encourage smokers to switch to the safer alternative product, electronic cigarettes. So, that leads us to our advocacy segment. And this week, I don't have anybody picked out as the primary organization for advocacy. This week, I'm going to be the advocate because it's come to light, you know, people are pounding these drums and saying how bad the problem is, right? And regardless of what you think about somebody's opinion on something, there is obviously some truth to what they're saying and some basis for their foundation. So as a reasonable person, forget, you know, trying to be a scientist. Let's just, as a reasonable person, if you're having a debate with somebody, you need to stand in their shoes for a moment and understand the issue from their perspective. Otherwise, you'll never be able to talk them into anything. So you have to understand where they're coming from if you want to change their mind. So everybody says, oh, there's no youth problem. There's no youth problem. Now, there is a youth problem. Is it as bad as they make it out to be? I don't think so. However, there is a problem and it does exist. And it's all started because of the jewel, right? Well, there's thousands of copycats to the jewel. Puff Bar was already made illegal in this country because it's a sealed flavored pod system. Trump made that illegal. So let's take a look at YouTube. What kind of people we have on here with Puff Bars? Oh, wait a minute. This kid doesn't look like he's of age. No, he doesn't. He doesn't look like he's 21. Welcome back, guys. 
we're going to be doing a review on um on uh it's this tree you guys you guys have been looking forward to this 350 subscribers he risked it all for us was the one comment make sure no smoke alarms go off yeah and you might argue, oh, well, he is 21. He just doesn't look it. And, you know, YouTube doesn't make you verify your age. Anybody can go set up in a Gmail account, lie about their birthday, right? How about when you have the title of your video, Letting a Friend Try Virginia Tobacco? Uh-huh. Vaping review. How old is this kid that's doing these reviews? They're taking out people, legitimate people, adults, who are trying to get other adults to stop smoking. They're banning their channels, throwing them off of YouTube. But here we have kids, obvious kids, on YouTube letting their friends, who are definitely younger than them, try Virginia tobacco. I don't like them try the Virginia tobacco. Sorry, I'm not uploading a few days. Uh-huh. You can watch the video yourself if you want to see whether this kid does it or not. Yeah? Where are they getting their stuff at? That's my question. That's what other people always say. Where are they getting this stuff at? Yeah? Social media. Here's TikTok. There's a video on YouTube about puff bars being sold on TikTok. Our rights to vape are being taken aware of because of these punks. Skin. You know what makes it even worse? How about we know black markets and how they generally work, right? And you think, oh, it's somebody standing out on the street corner or somebody selling stuff out of their trunk. Well, maybe in the days that you and I were back in high school, that's the way it was. But not today. Anybody can open an online business. Anybody. So let's say you just graduated high school, you're 18 years old, you're out, you know, flipping burgers somewhere. You're tired of having to work 40 hours a week to bring home 250 bucks. So you want to be a little entrepreneur. You decide you can start a business. You can start selling cosmetics, right? Sell it on Amazon, eBay. Hell, open up your own website. Sell it right on your website, right? Yeah, sales aren't going as good as you want them to. So? Hey guys, hello and welcome to or back to my channel. Yeah, welcome back to my channel. You know what I do on my channel? It's called Lil's Cosmetics. What do I do on my channel? I sell COVID kits. Yeah. Hand sanitizer, masks. Oh. And, well, since sales aren't doing too good, we're going to send you a puff bar, too, because that has everything to do with cosmetics. Sure does, doesn't it? Uh-huh. 10,000 views. Puff bar bundles. Help me prepare. You think she's selling it on YouTube? No. She's selling it off of her website. She's selling it on social media. She puts her Instagram and everything else out there for other people. That's how you make money nowadays. That's how you market things. Social media allows you to advertise all over the place. Take your platform. Realistically, businesses don't pick one. They pick a multitude of platforms, especially with the way that they've been arbitrarily banning people like Dash Vapes. That guy was helping people give up their deadly combustible cigarette habit. He was purposely doing everything he could 
to not sell to youth because he's the face of a business. But here we have kids selling to kids and posting it on social media that they're doing it. I don't even have 10,000 views from my whole channel for all 50 videos I've uploaded. But this one video has got over 10,000 views. And I guarantee you, she's not 21. But then again, there's different places where you don't have to be 21. You could drive over to Canada where you only need to be 18. Buy a couple cases of it. You bring it home. You go and throw this thing together. It costs you maybe five bucks to put together to your little cosmetic package. You go to the dollar store. Everything that's in there costs less than a buck. Except for the puff bar. You know, yeah, you're going to have to work. You're going to drive over to Canada. You're going to purchase a case of them. Because it's legal to buy there. And they're going to cross the border. Just a box in your trunk. Here they go. Throw it together. Put the word out there on Instagram, TikTok. My wife's been trying to get me to set up a TikTok. I'm like, how the heck is <coughs> that going to help me get the word out? Well, you just have to get more creative. Make videos that you know people are going to want to watch. How do people my age? There's some people my age that are still trying to figure out YouTube. But these guys got to figure it out. And you'll never catch them. Because they'll open up an account. They'll get a pallet of this stuff in. Or a box of this stuff in. They'll get the word out there. And then they'll tell all their followers, Here, here's my new username, new user ID. Check me out over there. Check me out over there. Uh-huh. When you diversify like that, there's no way that prohibition is ever going to work. And if you're thinking it's only kids that are 18 and over, and, you know, 18 and year olds should be able to do whatever they want, I mean, I kind of feel that way too. However, that's not what the law is. The law is you got to be 21. Okay? How about a 15-year-old who says, fuck the FDA? Because you know what? A friend of mine got me to try a cigarette, and I liked it. So I smoked it. Before I knew it, I was a regular user of cigarettes. But you know what? Your clothes stink. You stink. Costs a lot of money. So you want a safer alternative. Okay? So he decides to pick up vaping. And then he decides to make a YouTube video to tell the FDA to go fuck themselves. And he was smart enough to say, you must be of age to watch this video. Mm hmm So, how about I switch over and show you this video yourself. Hey, how are y'all doing? Um, sorry for the kind of weird angle. It's just kind of like a quick thing. I have a camera and stuff, but like it's too easy to set it up and everything. I don't have a tripod yet. This is just be a hassle. So, I'm doing a rant about the FDA. Um, we're using strawberry watermelon 5%. I unboxed it yesterday. Go check it out if you haven't. You unboxed it yesterday. 50 uh, milligram kind of nicotine. Video because I was like really excited. But, um, I look really bad like this. Okay. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing. FDA is mad about these because of underage users, such as myself, um, getting their hands on them. The question you have to be, got, you, you have to be asking yourself is, would you rather have them be smoking these or cigarettes? Because cigarettes have no warning labels. 
and the only restriction that they have is um the only restriction that they have is uh just flavors basically like honestly no warning labels on cigarettes limiting the toxic chemicals and stuff that they should be putting into this and then someone comes around and says hey i got a safer alternative and better flavors so it'll make cigarette smokers want to switch to this actually fun fact i used to smoke cigarettes before i used this fun fact so fun fact it was a bad decision that i made but it was my choice and now i have to live with it um there is like no reason that they should be discouraging the use of this because you guys haven't done enough studies yet um britain's health they said that is 95 percent safer 95 percent safer we know safer isn't safe okay nicotine causes cancer we know we know but nicotine doesn't cause cancer the thing is it's safer you guys shouldn't be putting more restrictions on these than your cigarettes that's just stupid and honestly like i know i shouldn't be using these but if anybody here is an adult smoker and they use nicotine, they'll know how hard it is to quit. Like, you can't just stop and I can't go to for help because, like, my parents would be flipping out. I'd have to quit cold turkey. I can't do that. Like, three puffs of this and I'm good. That's it. And they said that nicotine causes irritability and stuff. Honestly... If it does that to teens, that's literally normal puberty side effects. Like, honestly, stop. Okay. Because I haven't... Nobody's noticed a change in my behavior. I've been using nicotine products for two years now. I'm 15. Uh, 15? Been using it for two years? What? Um... I mean, if you guys are going to get mad about these things that are literally saving people's lives, I shouldn't be. I mean, nicotine really isn't the issue. Oh my goodness, it's auto-firing. I mean, where's the air? Auto-firing? Right, I need to stop this from firing. Did he get this um, on the black market? They shouldn't be getting mad at these. I mean, they didn't do anything. They made a safer alternative, and you guys are turning down because you guys are all scared of nicotine. Would you, you? The question you guys have to be asking yourself: Would you rather have your kids using these, or would you rather have them smoking Marlboro 100s or Marlboro Reds, Newport 100s? What, what would you rather have them smoking? Seriously? Just you got to ask yourself that question. And I know there are safer alternatives like nicotine patches, but sometimes they don't do the trick for people. Nothing beats like inhaling and exhaling. And sometimes it's not the same, like, because you're not lighting, going through the motions, but this is the closest safe alternative that you're going to get, and you guys are literally degrading everybody. And you are doing it on YouTube. You guys, like, honestly. And then YouTube is cracking down on making videos of these. Nick the Smoker, why aren't you guys cracking down on him? He does cigarette reviews. Nick the Smoker! reviews and they get busted. Oh my goodness, it's literally auto-firing on me. <laughs> it's a little malfunction, it's fine. A little malfunction. This is what happens when you have a black market. I don't condone the use of this. I'm not saying people should go out and get these if they're not addicted to nicotine. If you're not addicted, then don't get them. It's a mistake I made in my life, and I know that. I know that I shouldn't be using this, but this is hard to quit. And people have to understand that. This is basically my journey of quitting cigarettes. Like, honestly. Um, His journey to quit cigarette. cigarettes. Two days ago, I got a puff bar the next day, and I have been loving these three puffs, dude, and I am good. How many puffs has he already taken on video? The only reason I'm doing more than that is for the video. 
to prove that I'm fine. I don't have cancer. My voice isn't being affected. No. White patches. My teeth are fine. Oh, they're not fine, but that's a different story I'd rather not get into. <laughs> I do brush, but, like, my teeth just don't whiten. It runs in the family, honestly. And no, my family is not a smoker family. My dad used to smoke cigarettes, but he quit, like, 30 years ago, so... Um, so, which one of your friends taught you or give you the cigarette? So you guys shouldn't be degrading these products. They didn't do anything. You guys need to study these before you just ban everything. If you are going to ban them, then do a temporary ban. Do studies, do research, then let them back in according to, like, how you want them, how the, the studies have proven. So, like, flavors, um, thing with that, packaging... Like, it's not the flavors, it's the packaging, the way they package these, and the way that they advertise. And, um, it's only going up now because the people who got them when they were packaged for kids and they were advertised for kids are promoting them to everybody else. You guys need to stop. You need to stop. You're just ruining your own life by getting rid of these things. You're just on a journey to hell. So... On a journey to hell. If you want them to be banned, then you can keep advertising them to your friends. Keep this for personal use. Don't go around showing this off to your friends. None of my friends know that I use this. No, nobody I know that knows that I use this. Except my older brother. Everybody knows and now that you put it on no, YouTube. That's not the reason I get these. He's eighteen. He can't get these. Um, in America, you can get them in Canada if you're eighteen or older. Or 19 or older, or 21 or older, depending on the state you live in. Um, it's just all over the place in Canada, honestly. Like, no one knows anymore. I think in Alberta is, like, one of the least strictest, so you think you get these at 18. All right, that's enough. Enough. I can't take any more of this. Unbelievable. Listen, I'm not going to chastise the kid for being a vapor. What I am going to chastise is, like he was arguing against the FDA and against these politicians and these regulators outright banning these products. Because the bans and the taxes that they've put into place have created a thriving black market already. Tobacco 21 did not stop these 18, 19, and 20-year-old kids from smoking, and it did not stop them from vaping. Because if there's the desire to go and do those things, just like the kids have the desire to go drinking underage, they're gonna find a way to do it. Whether it be making their own, whether it be driving to a place that it is legal for them to acquire it, or whether it's going to be buying it on the black market, they will get their hands on this stuff. So, prohibition obviously does not work. All it's done is move things to a non-regulated marketplace. The black market. It's diversified it. It's moved all these 18, 19, and 20-year-old tobacco users to the black market, to social media, where they are selling it to each other to keep themselves happy. I'm trying to approach this with an open mind. And if the choice was, would I be happy about my kids vaping instead of smoking? Yes, I would much rather have them vaping than smoking. But you shouldn't be doing either of those two until you turn of age. The age of maturation is the age where you should be allowed to access these products because you are developed enough psychologically and physically to be an adult, to understand the risks, and to make an informed choice. However, underage kids are going to keep using it whether you make it illegal or not. That's one thing that's definitely clear. And as you saw in the videos, these products, more than likely, are not legitimate products made by manufacturers. 
They're knockoffs. They're counterfeits. And who knows what they're filling them with? These laws have done nothing to make the situation better. They're only making it worse. So, I didn't mean this to turn into a rant. However, I do have one thing I'd like to ask of you guys. I need you to go out and become advocates to stand up for what's right. Regardless of where you live, there's a vape advocacy group that goes and petitions politicians to make appropriate changes to regulation. There are places in the world where vaping is not on the books anywhere. There are places in the world where they simply says, right off the bat, they made it the exact same as cigarettes and they banned them. And there are places in the world where it is legal for you to consume your vice so long as you're of age and you purchase it from an, you know, a licensed facility who gets it from a legitimate source, which has already verified the safety of the product. Just like anything else, consumer safety. Okay, I understand you need regulations for consumer safety. However, here we have a situation where you have an underage kid who is now using 50 milligram per milliliter puff bar and has no way to taper down short of not taking more puffs. One day take five puffs, next day take four, the next day take three, next day take two. Situation's gotten worse, ladies and gentlemen, and this is where we are today. So go out and be an advocate and stand up for what's right. And never, never, no matter what these scare tactics are or laws, go back to smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. Keep on vaping. That's why that's my message. Hope you guys have a great weekend. And I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.